What is going on guys, it's Greg here today and I'm bringing you a Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 Comprehensive Aim Guide. Today we're going to be going over everything there is about aiming in Call of Duty and improving your aim as well as just overall how it works. As you guys can see on the blackboard behind me, I have been at my research post and uh, I have been coming up with ways that I feel I should formulate this video and make it so that way you guys can understand it very well, as well as make sure I don't miss any important topics that I want to go over while I make this video. So today we are going to be going over a comprehensive controller aiming guide because Call of Duty is a controller based game and that is what it is primarily balanced around. So that is what we are going to be going over. If you are a keyboard and mouse player, then um, unfortunately I can't really help you much there. Um, other than to tell you, you know, you can aim train with uh, some third party programs such as Kovacs or uh, Aim Labs, but this is going to be a round controller. So I'll be going over a lot of different things and hopefully this helps you guys out. So starting off, we're going to have settings. And I believe that the first part of getting your controller started up for learning how to improve your aim as well as getting used to aiming on a controller, especially if you're a new player. Settings is going to be the most important thing. And if you're a new player to Modern Warfare 2 or Call of Duty in general, this will be the first thing you want to do when you come to this game. So we're going to go ahead through controller. Now, I did make a settings guide a while back, so I'm not going to be going over completely everything. Um, I'm just going to be going over the aim-related stuff. If you do want to see everything about my settings on this game, uh, I will link that in the description below, and you guys can go ahead and check that out. So anyways, moving along here, as you guys can see, my aiming input device is selected to be on controller. And as for my general controller settings, I have vibration off. This could be one of the more important things whenever it comes to aiming. Reason being is having your controller vibration on, you are going to be messing with your muscle memory and fine motor control. Um, this is something that literally every single professional player and high skill player does. There might be a outlier here and there, but nine out of 10 people you ask, I would say are going to say this setting is disabled. And if you absolutely must have it on for immersion purposes then by all means i guess use it but if you're looking to have the best aim you possibly can turn it off as for your aiming horizontal stick sensitivity six six sensitivity is what i use you're going to want to use something between three maybe four at the minimum i would say three at the absolute minimum and you can go as high as you want it's going to depend on how you or overall aiming and how you your brain works with the controller um, and then ADS sensitivity multiplier I keep it at 1.00 and this is just to keep things as consistent as possible I feel that having some sort of uniform aiming where things feel as consistent as possible and um, trying to keep everything feel one-to-one -one is going to be the best thing you can do for your muscle memory and keeping it as consistent as possible so that's why I don't use any sensitivity multipliers and the rest of the stuff we're not going to worry about because it's not related to aim. Advanced target aim assist on. If you turn this off on controller, go play keyboard and mouse, okay? You're literally hurting yourself. Don't do it unless you're trying to challenge yourself. But, but I will have a practice tip for you guys about turning off aim assist. So stay tuned for that. But if you're actually playing online multiplayer matches, keep this on. Aim assist type, I use default. Black Ops was overpowered at one point. I never used it. The pros were ranting and raving about it. Apparently, it got nerfed. Default's the best. Don't use precision. Don't use focusing. They do have some differences, but I'm telling you right now, default or Black Ops are the two best options for you to be using. Focusing does say it's best for players new to analog aiming. Don't use it. Um, once you get to a certain level on the game, it becomes useless and you don't want to use it anymore. So it's just best to practice with the ones that are going to be best for the long run. Precision is for sniping, um, but at the end of the day, you can still snipe on default or black ops. So just use default or black ops. Gyro, gyro aiming, don't recommend it. All right. The actual meat and potatoes of aiming on Call of Duty here, we have aim assist response curve type. This one set this to dynamic if you are new to using a controller and you have never used a controller before. Also set this to dynamic if your aim is not very good to begin with. Also set this to dynamic if your aim is actually good to begin with. Also set this to dynamic if you are a professional player who has not yet set this to dynamic. So why is mine on standard? Because I'm an idiot who doesn't take his own advice. 
That's what it is. No, the real reason I'm on standard is because I refuse to change. It's as simple as that. Standard is subpar to dynamic, and you are actually making yourself a worse player by using standard over dynamic. Okay? It's as simple as that. And the reason I refuse to change to dynamic is because I just do not want to relearn how to aim. It's as simple as that. Um, it will take time switching to dynamic, but if you're somebody who is already not mastered a certain craft or something of that nature, then there is no reason for you to switch to something that is so much better than what you're using. For me, for example, the reason I'm not going to switch, and I'm going to show you guys this right now, so the combat record here in Modern Warfare 2 is not really that good for showing accuracy stats because it only shows it in recent games for whatever reason, but if we go here, I have 44% accuracy this match with Attack B. I have 44% this match with a no-stock MP5. I have 35% with Attack V, which is a, probably one of the hardest guns to control in this game. Same thing this match, same thing this match, pretty close. 37 this match with Attack V, 42 with the Lockman Sub, 39 with the Lockman Sub, 41 with the STB 556. Overall, I would say I'm a very accurate player, and I've pretty much gotten my aim where I want it to be. Therefore, why would I want to mess with it? Am I harming myself and my own gameplay, and could I be better at the game if I switch to dynamic? Yes. Will I switch to dynamic? No. Should you use dynamic? Yes. Don't be me. Anyways, that's the end of that rant, and uh, everything else you just want to keep this way, and your input's dead zone is going to be the most important thing here about this video, in my personal opinion. Having a low dead zone is one of the best things you can do, especially if you're on Xbox, because Xbox dead zones, I'm going to be honest with you guys, are a little bit higher by default than PlayStation. So having it as low as possible is going to be the best thing for you. If you are wondering what is the absolute best controller to use, the king goes to the PlayStation 5 controller. And if you're wondering why, it's because the PlayStation 5 controller has the fastest response times whenever it comes to input latency. The second best, the DualShock 4. I still use the DualShock 4 because I like the scuff impact, okay? But if you are using a PS5 controller and you play Claw or you want to play Claw, which if you don't know what Claw is, it's basically when you use your hands like this, all right? So your thumb goes on the thumbstick. I don't know if I can really hold the controller to do it, but this finger is used for hitting a square x circle triangle all that kind of stuff and then you use your middle finger for pressing on the triggers um i don't use claw i use paddles instead if you want to get yourself a paddle controller for ps5 or xbox whatever you play on go ahead the absolute worst controller you could be playing on is the xbox controller and that's not to be saying you can't be good on an xbox controller there are actually a couple pro players that do use xbox controllers it comes down to personal preference but there is a about a 7 to 8 millisecond advantage playing on a PlayStation controller, and that's just because Xbox controllers have their polling rate locked to 125 hertz. Whereas a PlayStation controller, for example, this is a thousand. This can go up to 8,000 hertz polling rate, which just means a quarter of a millisecond. Actually, no, it's uh, an eighth of a millisecond of input lag. Whereas this one is one millisecond of input lag. Xbox controllers, no matter what you do, are locked to eight milliseconds of input lag, and you cannot change them. Again, is eight milliseconds really that big of a difference? Not really. But if you do go from using something that is like a DualShock 4 or a PS5 controller, for example, that can go up to 8,000 hertz polling rate in a quarter, or I'm sorry, not a quarter, an eighth of a millisecond, I need to keep remembering that, then going back to an xbox controller will feel very uncomfortable and it will take you some time to adjust to but if you're already on xbox controller don't worry it's not that big of a difference and i promise you that you can still be better than playstation controller users okay it's people do it there's a lot of crack players on xbox but you want to go as low as you can for your left stick minimum and your right stick minimum input and the reason for this is because having this as low as possible without having stick drift, okay? It's going to help you guys uh, whenever it comes to having the best response time and reaction time on your controller because you'll have to put in less input to get a response on your screen. So for me, I use 0.05 on both because that is honestly what I use across almost all my controllers. I never really tune it below that. 
it feels comfortable for me and on top of that again it's very low to begin with and uh i don't have stick drift with it so can't complain also 0 0.99 is my right and uh left maximum input i just keep it at that everybody does because you'll have more motor control and fine tune over your aiming and your triggers this doesn't really have to do with aiming but it can do with trigger fingers so try to get as low as you possibly can um and yeah, everything else, that is going to be it for settings. So um, that is what I recommend for your aiming settings. And now let's go ahead and move into the next part of aiming. All right, guys, so I want to go into the next part of this video where I talk about centering. And this is going to lead into some other topics, which comes to recoil control, uh, as well as spray and all that kind of stuff. But it all comes down to one fundamental that is going to be the most important part, and that is centering. Whenever some of you guys have asked me to watch some of your gameplays in the past, or I watch average players play the game on Twitch, or anything of that nature, I notice one thing in common. They all walk around looking like this. What is bad about this? Well, are your enemies going to be right there on the ground? No. So, centering is about keeping your crosshair chest high at all times. And... The reason you want to do chest high in Call of Duty is because of two things. One, headshots do matter, but not on every gun. The most consistent area for damage multipliers and getting the best time to kill is almost always going to be for the chest on average. Now, headshots still do matter, like I said, on some guns. So, recoil will automatically kick up, and as a result... If you're already aiming for the chest to neck area, you might mix in a couple headshots to get a headshot. So that is why chest height is where people aim generally on Call of Duty. So I generally keep my crosshair about chest high. And if an enemy were to walk in front of me right now, they would be walking chest height into my crosshair. Now, we can always readjust for people that might be prone or crouched, but... Having chest high is going to be 9 out of 10 of our engagements. And you guys will see this, that basically I am aiming as if the person was in front of me. And sometimes, depending on where I'm going, I will begin to adjust my crosshair based off of this. So, I know there's a piece of cover behind this door on this map. And therefore, if I want to aim and pre-aim this piece of cover, I'm going to aim about chest high. Because most pieces of cover are going to cover up to about here if i had to like you know show you all myself so i'm gonna go ahead and put my crosshair about chest high so putting ourselves chest high here i'm gonna go ahead pre-aim this piece of cover here and you guys can see i came out and i'd be about chest high mixing in a little bit of recoil shots letting it go a little wee bit you might mix in a few headshots but you still want to try to control your recoil the best you can which we will get into that in a little bit and also aim assist will help with recoil control once we get there um so yeah moving on about you know just moving around the map you should come into private match if you want to really try this out or try it in your own gameplay just get used to walking around the map center you know chest chest high just walk around you know keep looking around keep trying to get your thumbstick control just always chest high okay if you're going up here you know trying to predict where the enemy is going to be we're going to go ahead and keep it just a little bit above that you know Okay, our centering's a little bit above that. Maybe a player's gonna come out that door. We'll aim a little bit ahead of the door because generally players are gonna fly out that door and then you might be able to catch them. Now, obviously, this isn't a great angle to be holding, but you guys get what I'm trying to tell you. Um, so yeah, if we're gonna go through doors, you know, there might be a guy in that corner, break through, chest high. We're aiming, right? Pre-aiming that corner. Centering is always also about keeping your crosshair as centered on the screen as possible through doorways and other things because... Again, most players, if they're going to be peeking, all right, they're going to come uh, from here. They're going to start peeking, trying to use this as cover. And if we're taking a look at this, right, we're on this piece of cover to counteract them. You don't want to aim as close to the wall as possible because, one, you're not going to catch aim assist. Two, if you're here, you will start to catch aim assist, especially if you're wiggling around. And this is another very important part is aim assist. Aim assist works two different ways. There's rotational 
and then there's also uh, slowdown, traditional slowdown. Rotational works if you are wiggling or moving around strafing, and this is why strafing is so important. If you're standing still, not doing any of that, you will not have rotational, and instead you'll just get slowdown, but you'll get both if you're kind of wiggling around, just spinning around your thumbstick in a circle on the thumbstick. That's what I'm doing here. And I have this tack V uh, pretty high in aim walking move speed. So you guys can see this is a pretty fast strafing tack V. So if someone comes around here, it's going to be really awkward for them to hit me. And their full body is going to be exposed to me as they come around the corner. And I'm going to catch aim assist on them. So overall, I kind of have the advantage. Now to counteract somebody that's sitting on a head glitch, you want to keep, again, chest high. And we can go ahead and bunny hop this guy. But we're going to keep it about chest high. And we're going to want to be careful. Uh, we can, might even throw in a little pre-fire, you know, when we can. But you have to remember, there is a disadvantage to bunny hopping. And that's going to be that you are not going to be able to shoot for a bit. And your whole body will be exposed. It just depends on how that player is going to be tracking you. Um, but yeah, so that's just a little bit about centering. A little bit of movement tip in there too. Don't worry about the movement too much, especially if you're a new player. I will have a movement guide coming out for this game. Movement in this game is nowhere near as important as previous Call of Duty games that had slide canceling and all that kind of stuff. Uh, there's not really a lot of tech you can do, but there is some important tech that we will get into later down the road. So another part I want to talk about is predicting cover, and this is just comes down to your memorization of the map and how you yourself learn these maps. Um, it is best to play every map in the game and try to learn the maps and their layouts. And the best way you can do this is go into private match, shoot some bots if you want a nice low um, pressure environment. But if you just want to play the game, you don't really want to worry about playing against bots, then you're going to have to get comfortable moving around and, you know, just getting different engagements rolling because it's how you're going to learn the map. If you're just sitting here in this building, you close the doors up, all right, you sit in this corner, and you wait for people to walk by all game, you're not going to learn the map, right? The only thing you're going to know is maybe a guy will come through here. Maybe a guy will break open these doors, you know? Or if you just sit in this window all game and you don't move from here and trying to wait for people to walk in your line of sight, you're not going to. So if you're a new player, you want to definitely get used to moving around the map and you want to figure out little jump spots. You know, there's a little ladder here. We can go up here and um, you open up a nice line of sight on a lot of different areas of the map. And uh, what I mean by pre and cover now is, so for example, if someone, we know that somebody could be hopped up right there trying to counter this line of sight. So whenever I come up here, right, first thing I'm going to check, let's do this again. All right, I'm going to come up the ladder. Actually, first thing you want to do is make sure you have your gun out. You don't want the combat knife out uh, if that's your running. And whenever you come up here, all right, we're going to come up here and we're going to pre-aim the door. You know, maybe maybe we see a guy there, then we'll pre-aim the door. We'll shoot that. Um, or maybe there's a guy in that corner right there where the, uh, the sinks are, the bathroom. But if no one's there, we don't see them while we're climbing up, then we're going to focus our attention over here, right? We're, pe we're peeking lines of sight. And maybe there's a guy right there. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to engage the player that's there. So it comes down to sweeping angles and keeping centered on those areas. You know, you come up, okay, no one's there. Oh, someone's over there. You know, we have our TAC V, or uh, this TAC 56. We have this out, and now we can engage that player. Maybe they're in the bus, all right? Maybe they're in the bus. You come up, no one's there, no one's over that way. Oh, someone's in the bus. You know, now we want to pull back, and we want to keep ourselves as covered as possible. We don't, we don't just want to come out here and expose all of our body. We want to kind of, you know, pretend we're using cover here. And the best way I like to try to dis discuss cover is you see where, like, the bottom of my iron sight is. That's where the bricks are. So I know I'm pretty covered here, all right? He can't see a lot of me, probably just my head if he's in that bus. Um, but there's also little areas and tricks you can do as well while you're trying to do this. So this is going to help you guys get comfortable moving around the map as well as keeping your centering, right? So... If I want to move to here to maybe get a better line of sight over okay. here. So I'm going to go ahead and jump on these bricks, jump up here, come through. Again, we're trying to keep our crosshair centered in case we encounter some enemies. We'll be at chest high, dealing the most damage to them, if not hitting their head. Come around through here. Again, as we do this, we're going to peek and we're going to try covering some different angles. So one of the most common angles here at A is most likely if you're in the scenario where you're coming up this way and maybe you have some teammates and you hear a lot of gunfire over that way, majority of the times players will be spawning out back over there, and they're going to rush right down through towards the red crate, right? So we're going to go ahead, and we know this, 
I'm not expecting you guys to notice, but I'm just telling you right now how this generally works. Now I come up to this door, and I'm going to preempt this, and I'm going to check, you know, a little bit of angles. Maybe a guy down there, that guy there, and I'm going to expose myself to the red crate. Why would I not just want to go ahead and run up to this door and, well, take damage? If I run up to this door, I have so many lines of sight on me right now, right? So there's not really many ways I can peek them. I can peek them through this door, down here, through this window. But first time they see me up here is going to be through this door. So I come up over here, all right, you know, checking the crates, checking there, checking there. Maybe there's one on the rooftop or I'll see over here, all right? You want to, you don't want to overextend and you want to make sure you're positioning yourself properly to cover, giving yourself the best advantage in the firefight as well. All right, so next up, I want to talk about trigger discipline. And this is one of the most important things and... It's also going to help you guys so you don't have to run extended mags on your gun. I don't like using extended mags because they weigh down the gun heavily, and I also don't like um, shooting a lot of bullets because if you run out of ammo and you have to reload, that takes away precious time for you to uh, engage enemies. So, in my opinion, the best thing you can do is try to be conservative with your ammo, but spray as necessary. So, what is trigger discipline? Trigger discipline is whenever you have multiple enemies on your screen or maybe you see somebody and you don't want to shoot at them right away or maybe you're going to let them survive and you're not going to shoot at them at all so you have to prioritize certain targets first things first i want to say that is somebody on the other team streaking on you obviously you're not going to, want to use trigger discipline on that guy you're going to want to kill him and dispatch him as soon as possible um but if you see like let's say i come over here all right and let's say there's a guy down there there is a guy over there and there's a guy deep all right but what i want to do would I just want to start blindly spraying? Let's say this guy's aiming at me, this guy's not. So I'm not, if this is the first guy I see, I'm not going to shoot at him right away, right? I want to assess the situation a little bit. So I might come up here, and this guy, he's watching C-Flag for whatever reason. It's standing right here. I imagine a player right there. Imagine another player here who actually has a line of sight on me, and he's watching this doorway. And then there's that guy over there who's looking down into the middle of the map, or watching the tires and that area over there. So, I see this player, I'm like, okay, he's here, but he's not paying attention. I'm just going to do a quick sweep. I'm just going to check, all right? Oh, there's a guy there. Let me go ahead and engage him. All right, we dispatch him. Now we snap over here, take this guy out. Oh, we see the guy deep over there. Let's go ahead and run away, all right? It's dangerous, right? We just took out two people. This guy's going to react to us, and he's going to be looking at us from there, and he's probably going to take us out, or she. Um, and we're going to go ahead and back off, and we're going to go ahead and maybe get a little different route going. Maybe we'll go down there, or maybe we'll play a little timing, right? We'll see if somebody wants to come around back, right? We'll wait a little bit, see if anyone's trying to peek us. And we'll go back and we'll go for the chow, right? So trigger discipline is about trying to have a clean shot on an enemy, but also prioritizing targets and making sure that you are taking them out in proper order. You want to focus on a player that is looking at you first, and then you want to go for the players that aren't looking at you. I know that's simple, but trust me, Call of Duty is such a fast-paced game that you aren't going to be actively thinking about this until you get it to become second nature. So I suggest taking it a little bit slower if you're new to the game or you're just someone who doesn't do this already. And think about it. All right. I see a guy there. He has his back to me. And check. Oh, there's a guy there. I engage him. I kill him. Okay. Snap. I take this guy out. So we'll take that. Boom. Snap over to this guy. Boom. And then we see that guy up there. Maybe if he's still not paying attention, we can chow him. But if he is paying attention, we don't want to chow him, right? We want to go ahead and get away. And having a knife is great for getaway, but just remember, it's not going to help you pass point blank. Um, but it's also great for mobility. I usually run a pistol, though. Um, so yeah, we just turn around, we get out of here, and now we can reposition. All right, maybe there's people that are going to be coming over here from behind. They're going to be on a deep flank around this building, right? I'm going to go ahead and wait a few seconds, right? Trying to see if I can get them on timing. They're not going to be expecting me to be here because... They heard me shooting up here, so they might be thinking, okay, this guy's still not going to be paying attention. They'll come back here, take him out, and then I'll start looking for other angles. Maybe I'll hop down, try to mix things in. You know, maybe I'll come here, peek different angles. There's a lot of different things you can do whenever it comes to IQ, um, but again, this is all centering-related stuff, right? I'm just trying to keep centered, and I'm trying to make up scenarios to practice my centering, and that's what I want you guys to practice in private match is I want you guys to try these different scenarios and get used to putting your crosshair about chest high on where you believe the enemies would be, right, whenever they come around. And that's what I want you guys to work on whenever it comes to centering.
So now we are going to go over the actual recoil and how it works. So first things first, I'm going to use one of the heaviest guns for recoil. And I'm actually going to back out of the firing range real quick because I want to take off all of the attachments here, right? So we're going to have a naked TAC V with 20 rounds in the clip. And what I like to do, and if you're on PC, first things first, if you're on PC, go to your graphical settings, press L2, and uh, just make sure that under quality, you have bullet impacts and sprays on, and this is very important. I know a lot of people turn this off for some reason because apparently, you know, a few extra frames, turn it on, please. And the reason I'm telling you this is so you can learn your recoil patterns. So, Attack V, if you're on console, I'm pretty sure it's on by default and you can't turn it off, so don't worry about that if you're on console. Now, for the TAC V here, this is one of the highest recoil guns in the game because of a few reasons. One, it has extremely high first shot recoil. So, whenever I start shooting it, I'm just going to go ahead and shoot this gun and then we'll come back to it, actually. So, if we go ahead and take a look at our recoil pattern, we can see that the bullet starts here, comes up to here, over here, there, 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 and it continues up. So the overall general recoil pattern on his gun is just straight vertical recoil, but you have to time this recoil pattern properly if you want to control it properly, okay? So the initial recoil of the TAC V is very high, and this is why I think this is one of the hardest guns for the average player to use, is because mastering that initial recoil is going to make or break whether or not you take out your target. You have to remember, Call of Duty is a game of milliseconds, where you're going to die on average in 200 milliseconds. And if it's hard for you to control this gun off the beginning, that's not a good start, right? So that's why I want to go over controlling one of the hardest guns in the game to control, and then we'll go into some other examples of some easier guns to control. But, whenever it comes to the Attack V again, I'm just going to shoot off the rest of them. A few more mags, I I think you have unlimited ammo in here so i'm going to shoot off a few more mags and we'll take a look at the general recoil pattern since that was just one spray all right so after a few sprays you can see here that it's doesn't actually look too bad, but you'll notice there's a lot of variance in the recoil pattern, but it's pretty much a straight vertical recoil pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go over to my TAC V now, and we're going to talk about a few things. So one, recoil control. How does recoil control work? Well, if we go to the firing range again, I should do this first, is I'm going to aim at this wall and I'm going to try to control this TAC V without any attachments. So what you want to do is you want to look at the direction of your recoil. Does it go straight up? You pull straight down. Does it go up to the left? You pull down to the right. Does it go up to the right? You pull down to the left. Let's get a little song going here, right? <laughs> no, I'm just playing. Anyways, but that's how it goes, right? You want to control it in the opposite direction. Now, some guns will have a recoil pattern that goes up to the left, up to the right, up to the left, or, you know, things of that nature where it will change directions maybe even multiple times. And all you have to do is you have to notice when and how many shots you shoot, when does that direction change, and then you just compensate it for it that way. You'll pull down, like if it goes up to the left, up to the right, you will pull down to the right, down to the left, right? We're just drawing the opposite pattern. So for this gun, it's pretty much straight vertical, but it has very high initial recoil. So therefore, I'm going to pull down more on the initial recoil and then pull down less as it continues to go on. Now again, we do have some horizontal variants, so our recoil spread is not going to be that great because this gun does have some recoil variants, which means whenever I'm pulling down, it's going to be kicking side to side quite a bit. If we go ahead and take on some of these targets, we'll even have our aim assist, which makes it easier to control recoil. But you guys can see down longer range, the TAC V, <laughs> it gets pretty hard to control, okay? And it's because on controller, we don't have as easy as a time on keyboard and mouse because on keyboard and mouse you have fine motor control of pulling down on the mouse and the sacrifice on that is you have no aim assist which means uh, tracking targets is a lot harder but on controller we can see that the tac v does not feel that hard to use at medium ranges and close ranges it's just those long ranges is where we're gonna have to really hone in on controlling this recoil so 
for that reason alone, the way I want to build this gun is I'm going to want to try to cut back on that vertical recoil as well as the horizontal recoil. Horizontal recoil is going to be that side-to-side -side variance or spread, and the vertical recoil is going to be our magnitude, which is how high we go. So the recoil stabilization attachments are going to be our um, horizontal recoil, and our vertical recoil is going to be recoil steadiness, and then our recoil smoothness i believe this doesn't really do much it might be consistency i'm not really sure i mean there's really been it's been tested no one's really found what it does yet so it's still you know if, if it ever is discovered it's still news to me um but vertical recoil controls obviously be that vertical magnitude horizontal recoil controls obviously gonna be that horizontal spread on top of that there is still one more um i believe Recoil control. That's what I would, that's what it is. It's in the rear grips. Um, you'll see recoil control sometimes on barrels and other things. Recoil control is everything combined into one, so you can never go wrong with that. And one of the most important things is actually going to be our aiming stability. So I am going to d demonstrate this real quick, and this is going to be our recoil consistency. Okay, so this is going to determine how consistent our recoil pattern is. So I'm going to put something on here that is really going to help out aiming stability i'm also going to put on the shark fin because that's going to help with the aiming stability um we're going to go ahead and put on a stock that helps with that as well i believe this one would be the best one for recoil stability and then i'm going to go ahead and make sure there's nothing else i can put on here and uh all right so i'm going to go ahead and i'm just going to tune it for maximum well actually you don't want to tune for max you want to tune for sweet spots so you see how like right there it kicks up Seems like around best is right. Oh no, stick drift in here because there's no dead zone. Seems like right about there is best for that. And uh, we're not going to mess with our recoil stabilization. We just want that aiming idle stability. And then this one, you can't tune that. But this one, you can. Got to get that as best as possible. Stop it. I, they, they need to add a dead zone here so bad, guys. They, they really do. I'd recommend plugging in a mouse almost to do this. Let's do it that way. <laughs> oh my goodness. Infinity Ward, please. So you guys can see, it's not really increasing much. It's more just kind of bringing down our mobility even more, even though we're not really gaining anything from it. So we're just going to fine-tune that. About our limit there, where it's not hurting too much. And uh, now we're going to go into our firing range here. And uh, you guys can see the previous one. So I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to shoot off one clip here. Oh yeah, we have a 30 round mag in now, but that's okay. You guys can see that this is much tighter than this single mag, okay? It is so much tighter. And uh, it's going to be much easier to control that, especially down ranges, right? Because we're going to have to compensate so much less for horizontal spread. So I'm going to go ahead and pull down there, pull down there, and pull down there. And you guys can see that was much easier for me to control than the last time I did this. So, again, we're just going to keep doing a little bit here, and that's how we take it out. Now, you want to build your gun for versatility, and uh, I'm not going to... I already have, like, a little guide going over the tuning and all that kind of stuff, but I'm just going to put on my favorite Tech V setup. If you guys are curious, I'll just go ahead and throw it in here real quick. I'm not going to go over tuning settings on it right now, but because um, it's not the point of this video. But... Basically, you want to try to kit this out for what feels best for you and whenever it comes to what you prefer with handling and recoil balance. For me, I care way more about recoil balance and consistency than I do handling because you can always just position and play smarter, um, but you cannot really control and compensate random recoil. So I try to cut down on random recoil and idle sway as much as possible so that way our spread is really nice and consistent and our recoil is consistent. So, you guys could see that that was what our general, you know, no attachment with good spread, uh, no attachment without anything. Now let's go ahead and take a look with what I use. So this is for a 30 round clip, and you guys could see that it is pretty straightforward and straight up. There still is quite a bit of that initial jump. 
And I hope to see this gun get a little bit of initial recoil buff down the road, because I really think it would help the average player out. But um, for me, this is what I find to be the best. And again, we're going to be aiming about chest high here. And I'm just going to go ahead and compensate by pulling straight down on the TAC-V. And you guys can see that with the setup that I'm comfortable with and the one I've been practicing with, my recoil control overall is pretty good, and I'm not missing a lot of shots. And uh, if we go ahead in here, you know, maybe we have them moving around a little bit. You guys can see down the longest ranges, it still is a little bit difficult, especially on moving targets. But at the end of the day, overall, I'm shooting about 55% accuracy, which is pretty good for a gun like this, where there really is some of that horizontal variance, and it has really high initial first shot accuracy, because... How you start spraying this gun and how you start is definitely going to affect how you finish. I would definitely not recommend using the TAC-V down extended ranges, but I would definitely say that it is a very good gun for that close to medium range, and you just can't go wrong with it. So, any Alright, so now we have the M4, and I'm just going to go ahead and spray the M4. And we can see this gun with my build. A little bit up to the uh i did not mean to shoot there a little bit up to the left and then straight up so i'm just gonna pull down to the right and then straight down and you guys can see that was a pretty accurate spray down long range and we're taking them out with ease right just controlling the recoil in the opposite direction and your attachments are heavily going to affect your recoil control so i take a lot of time to figure out my class setups and what works for me i experiment with a d lot of different items how many bullets was that i experiment with a lot of different items and i'm constantly changing my setups trying to see if i can find something better um so there truly is no such thing as a best class setup but i promise you guys that um you you will find things that you are definitely comfortable with and uh you can practice with them and if you keep them consistent and just try to tune a little bit here and there you'll find a lot of success this is my tac 56 setup i'm gonna go ahead and spray it at the wall to see the recoil pattern this one straight up, up to the right. So pull down, pull down, pull down, right? And if we want to do the whole recoil pattern, we just pull down. And a little bit later, we switch, start pulling to the left a little bit, and it's going to keep it center mass. So I'm going to go ahead and do that again, just so I can show you guys. And that's how we control the TAC-56. So again, a little spray action there. And... Uh, there we go. Do one more gun here. This is going to be a stockless MP5. This is a attachment that really hurts your recoil control. And this is why I don't really like these kind of weapons because it makes them extremely inconsistent. So you guys see how tight that uh, M4 was or compared to the SCAR here. But what about this stockless MP5? We actually have some attachments that are going to really harm our recoil for mobility. Well, let's go ahead and take a look. So, as you can see, it's a little bit all over the place, especially whenever it comes to that actual spread on the pattern. So, it's going to make it really ineffective downrange, and you're going to lose versatility. Again, I'm going to just try to shoot it a couple times at the wall here so you guys can see just, you know, where the spread is going here over time. The general recoil pattern is still there, but the spread is what's going to eat us alive. And as you can see... After a few mags, that does not look controllable at all. As a matter of fact, it looks completely random. So, you don't want to hurt your recoil spread all that much, and you really don't want to hurt your recoil control. So for a gun like this MP5, or Lachman Sub, I am generally going to try to use this thing not past the second target. Because if you're wondering what it's going to look like at the farthest target... No. No. Because it's going to be random every single time we pull the trigger, right? See that? About 22% accuracy. That's not good. So, don't even bother because if they have a gun that can beam you, you're dead, right? And the time to kill on this thing is not that good down that kind of range anyway. So, we're going to keep it for the close quarters. And even mid-range might be stretching a little bit too much. We're going to definitely gonna be, want to be aggressive with this MP5. And you have seen this class out of in a couple of videos of mine where I do use it. Um, but it's not a versatile gun, right? It's not something that has high versatility. It's something for running and gunning and running and gunning only. So that's a gun that has harm from recoil. Again, recoil plot, really random, hard to control, worse aim overall. So the last thing I want to talk about is practice, and I'm going to put it free-for-all in private match. 
and I'm also going to throw it on shipment. So I'm going to go ahead into the game setup. <clears throat> We're going to go over to shipment. I'll do shipment holiday just because it's a nice, memorable, you know, Christmas time theming. Am I right? So <laughs> let's go ahead and do that. And we'll go to default game rules and we'll put this time limit. I think they have it maxed out 45. We'll just put the maximum 1,000 points. Uh, let's just lower that down so, you know, it can just start, skip info on. Uh, let's put it to... Uh, let's see here. Spawn ammo mags. We'll just keep that normal. Where is it at? It's been a while since I've done this. Uh, there it is. Radar always on. Put on constant. Just so that way we can see where all the bots are spawning in. And then under game setup, we're going to go to bots. And we're going to put them at hot maximum. Apparently it's 5 for free for all. It's kind of low, but whatever. Uh, they should totally increase that. Recruits. We want as low as possible because we don't really care about our enemy shooting back okay if we want our enemies to shoot back we'll go play pubs and uh you know we'll see what the lobby gives us right and we'll take it from there in private match we want a low stress environment to where we can just take time practice our recoil control our reflexes all that kind of stuff so you guys can see here basically going ahead we're gonna shoot at our bots we're gonna be keeping our crosshair about chest high and we can see them spawning in, so we can go ahead and try to predict where they're going to be. And we try to learn, based off of the mini-map, where they're at on the map. Which is going to help you guys not only learn the maps, but also how to engage these guys on the mini-map. And you guys can see, it will also help you get mini-map awareness and trying to correlate that to where they're at on the map. So you guys can see I'm using a Vaznev here, and I'm just engaging these bots, taking them out, practicing trigger discipline right we're trying to take them out as fast as we can without using too many bullets and um if you guys are wondering what the vaznev class setup is it's literally just the pro vaznev setup with a tune that's all it is i use the professional vaznev setup um i might have the recoil control rear grip on compared to the demo clean shot because i don't like the added recoil it has because i like to stretch out my ranges using the vazzy because my rifle player by heart so, again, that's my setup, but again, we're going to try to take these bots out as fast as we can with the least amount of bullets, and we're going to practice our aim, our centering, all that kind of stuff. I've never seen a bot stand up there. <laughs> that is awesome. Um, not right there. And, uh, yeah, practice makes perfect. Do this for a little bit, you know, before you guys go ahead online and play. Um, and do it daily. I used to do this a lot back in the day. I still do it from time to time. Especially if I want to practice with a certain gun and get better at its repo control and all that kind of stuff. I'll come in here and do that. Um, but yeah, this is how you guys improve at the game and how you guys can improve your repo control, your centering, all that kind of stuff. Practice makes perfect. There's no right or wrong answer. It just comes down to having the proper tools at your disposal and taking the time to actually practice. And um, that is, in my opinion, what is going to help you guys improve at Call of Duty and become a better player. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, I'll go ahead and end it from there with a little bang. I'll see myself out for that one. Hey guys, it's Greg from the future here cutting back in. And uh, I just wanted to bring up the tip I told you guys I was going to talk about, which was the turning off aim assist so in private match if you want to play against bots you can turn off aim assist and you can shoot against bots and it's going to help you get fine control over your thumbstick and it's also just going to help you build up better muscle memory whenever it comes to acquiring targets so i would definitely do that but um again you still want to practice with aim assist on as well so you know your primary focus is playing with aim assist on if you want to do a little cherry on top and improve a little bit faster or do something of that nature, then go ahead and turn off aim assist for a couple of uh, maybe sessions in private match and then turn it back on at the end before you go online again. So anyways, yep, that's that tip for you. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully this helps. Be sure to let me know in the comment section below. Drop me a rating. As always, subscribe channel if you're new, and I will see you all in the next video. Peace out. Have a great day. And get that shot looking like a straight laser beam. I'll see you all in the next one.